Improving Student Nutrition Through School Vending Machine Policies by Matt Lance Landis, David Ahrens, and Patrick Remington. Um, this article is something I found, actually, I spent a lot of time looking through the DBU catalog for something that had to do with nutrition policies, um, just because it's something that I have a few questions I think that the group might be able to um, come up with a good discussion with, um, but I didn't really find a whole lot, so I just googled it and an article came up, and so my um, uh, citation for this might be a little bit um, difficult to understand just because it didn't actually take me to a website it just literally just popped up the PDF file of this article but um, I found it very interesting um, it talks about obviously how obesity has been a big problem all in America the article is actually from Wisconsin's Public Health and Health Policy Institute so it specifically talks a lot about Wisconsin in the article but um, it also goes through and talks about overall information and um, it talks about how adolescents are starting to eat really um, poorly how our diets are really bad um, in America overall and how obesity is obviously um, escalating quickly which I'm sure we have all seen um, um, relevant in our own lives and in the lives of those around us. So um, in this article it talks about how eating healthy um, is obviously something that's very important um, for adolescents to continue to grow and be healthy and that because we they spend so much time at school that um, providing them with healthy food and healthy habits at school is important. Um, the higher caloric demand of teenagers is often satisfied by supplementing mealtime calories through snacking and in schools through the use of vending machines. Um, when I was in high school, we um, a big policy came through and they actually took away our vending machines and replaced, um, well they took all of them away and only brought one back and it only was filled with water and Gatorade. Um, nothing else was allowed on our school um, premises when I was in high school. But when I was in elementary and middle school, those rules were not established yet. So we had um, snack machines that had candied chips, all kinds of things. And I remember on Fridays, our teachers um, would let us go, depending on our behavior throughout the week, we could go get snacks and have them during class. Um, and there was soda even and all kinds of stuff that we got to have then. And I also remember our... Um, cafeteria having an actual snack bar that had uh things you could order for lunch that were all just so unhealthy cheese sticks little pizzas fried egg rolls smoothies uh that were full of sugar um just tons of stuff like that and people actually would just eat at the snack bar every day for lunch instead of um, bringing their lunch or eating the healthy option that the school was providing so that's why I kind of found this interesting because I guess I'm interested to see how y'all all feel about um, these rules and policies that are taking place in school settings about outside sources bringing in food, um, like kids bringing snacks in, um, things for birthday parties, and then also things like vending machines and snack bars in schools and how that's all changed and um, what y'all's opinions on that are. Um, this school or this article talks a lot about um, providing alternatives in vending machines. So it found that 21% of vending machine slots were accounted for by soda while only 1% was accounted for by low fat milk. Um, it also talks about how um, there's a food pyramid, food pyramid for the vending machines. Um, fruits and veggies were less than one, so were low fat cookies or baked goods. So were nuts or trail mix. 2% was milk, um, whole milk, 1% low fat milk. Diet sodas um, and fruit juice were about 7%. Chips and cookies and cakes were about 9%. Water was 7 Chips, um, oh, the first chips was low fat. This chips are, these chips are not, and also crackers that include cheese is up to 12, candies to 17, soda 21, fruit and other sweetened drinks 13, and sports drinks 8%. So I just feel like obviously if you look at this chart, it's a lot of water, which is good, but candy, soda, and chips, and um, fruit sweetened drinks, which are all really unhealthy. 
Um, this article talks about how schools could restrict the time of access to go to the vending machine, limiting the time that that's available. I want to say that our school did that before they got rid of the vending machines, that the only time it was acceptable to be out there getting something was during lunch. Um, banning low nutrient, high caloric foods. So kind of like what our school did, they took out all of the horrible things that are in them and replaced it with water and um, Gatorades. And um, it says that removing the junk food helps add to normal conditions for students. Changing prices so that uh, healthy foods actually end up being a little bit cheaper so that um, they're possibly a better option for people and students might choose that because it's cheaper and then overall just be eating something that's a little bit healthier. Um, policies that are addressed this are really going to play a role in having this issue fixed. And so um, it says that in striving to be effective educators, schools should consider ways to extend health and nutrition education beyond the classroom to school snacking and meal times. Um, if a kid's hungry, then they're not going to learn. So I found this really interesting, and I just kind of wanted to see what y'all thought about um, vending machines, snack bars, and um, the healthy versus non-healthy habits that we have on school campuses. So let me know what you think. I'm excited for discussion about this um, particular topic.